It's gonna be that that timeless play of can you break my board or not? Yeah, which usually involves fear mode. <laughs> I just saw a really great video the other the other week of uh, where th that was not the the like purpose of the video was this whole break the board thing, but it was very funny. Mm. It was there was one guy like, well here's my board, this 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 and this, and then he goes, well sphere mode, and he goes, no no no, you can't have sphere mode. <laughs> oh, Volcanic Queen. Nah, you're not allowed that either. It's like, we do have names, you know. Yeah, you tell them. My name is Eugene, and your name is... Can you just not? Oh, and let you take all the credit? You haven't been out of your room in a week. Yeah, about that. Will you change my poop bucket? You're what? <laughs> so I had to roast the commentators just a little bit, but they really do do a fantastic job. I have a lot of respect for those guys. I mean, I couldn't do their jobs. I really seriously couldn't do their jobs. I'd be, I'd be way too sarcastic. Like, I really couldn't do it. I'd be like, yeah, look at this fine athlete here, this fine Yu-Gi-Oh player, best shape of his life, 300 pounds, nearsighted, neck beard, lives with his mother. Great athlete. All jokes aside though, I actually have a lot of respect for those guys because their job is very difficult if you think about it, especially this weekend because YCS Bochum was, if I remember, the second biggest Yu-Gi-Oh event in history. The second biggest Yu-Gi-Oh event in history, you guys. That is just insane. And not only was the event that huge to where, you know, they had all of that to keep up with, but the event was very diverse as far as, you know, how many different decks people were playing. Um, I'm going to show the top 32 breakdown behind me right now, um, but it if you look at it, it just goes to show, you know, how many, you know, just the wide variety of decks that people are playing. And just the sheer diversity of our current metagame is, is the only thing I really need to cover in this video. It's going to be the entire subject of the video, guys. Because right now, I truly feel like because of the diversity in our meta, you can take just about any deck to an event and win with it. Which, um, I'm going to break that down here in just a second. But I'm just going to say right now, as a teaser, it's both a good thing and a bad thing. You guys will be like, how is that a bad thing, being able to take any deck to an event. Well, I'll get to that, but let's start with why that is a good thing. Why, why um, you know, being able to take any deck to an event right now is good. And there are actually a few different reasons why that's good. Um, reason number one why that's good is it shows that Konami is making good decks for us to use. If Konami were only to release, you know, one or two powerful decks in an entire year, you can see where that would be problematic. Those two decks, you know, one or two decks would completely dominate our metagame. So that is where it's a good thing. This is a good sign. This shows that, you know, we have just such a variety of good cards and good decks available to us that we can, that we're able to make our own choices, you know, whether it be deck or card choice, you know, in both, you know, card choices in decks, we're able to do that and compete with just about anything, everything, we any deck we want to. And that is what's really, really great. Another reason why our high diversity format is good is because it's just fun. There's no, I don't even need to like, you know, the, uh, you know, fluff up this reason or anything. All I need to say is that, you know, being able to play anything and then not know what you're going to be playing against leads to really fun formats. I mean, just take hat format, guys. I mean, people revere hat format for being one of the most diverse formats and one of the funnest Yu-Gi-Oh formats in history, guys. I mean, we had hat, um, you know, hands, artifacts, trap tricks, which, which was, you know, the defined best deck of the format, but there were so many other good decks available at the time, you know, gear gear um you know just etc i don't remember every single other deck you know available at the time because it was so long ago now but to make a very long story short and to make sure i don't drag on here that format is just very you know it's held it's held up high in the Yu-Gi-Oh community fans of the game really like that format and i'm one of them i really like that format looking back at it because you know it really seems like i could play zombies which you know i really liked zombies at the time um it, you know at that point in time i really felt like you know zombies or or just you know cy cyber dragons or any deck that i wanted to play was uh you know, decent, and it was fun. And that is exactly how I view our current format. Our current format is still, I mean, you still play hand traps. You still see, you know, hand traps played, um, you know, expensive cards being played, uh, whatnot, but you don't see, you know, just one tier one, you know, or tier zero deck just completely dominate at the moment. I mean, yes, Pendulum FTK is a thing, but in the defense of Pendulums, we kind of all knew that they were going to be the best deck going into the format. We just didn't know how good they were going to be, you know? I mean, so what? Pendulum FTK is a thing, yes. It's kind of a pain in the dick, yes, it should probably be, be dealt with, but the wide range of decks being played at events, guys, you know, just the data speaks for itself, okay? Every single deck just about is is viable. True Draco's viable, um, you know, uh, Paleo's viable, um, Trick Stars, I mean, are very, very viable. They're very, very good. I mean, pick your deck that has come out, and, the, you know, fairly recently, I mean, obviously you can't take a deck from, you know, 
10 years ago in win right now because it's just, you know, Master Rule 4, and you know, even before Master Rule 4, I mean, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh was debatably faster. So to make a really long story short here, if you're adept in current Yu-Gi-Oh and what's been going on, in other words, you, if you've been studying the, our current metagame and stuff and you're, and, you're, and you're knowledgeable on what every deck does and you're not playing a deck from, let's just say, 10, 15 years ago or something, yeah, you're able to top a tournament. You're able to win and compete and, and do everything. It's actually really great. But a lot of you guys are not gonna like what I'm about to say at all, but I think you're gonna understand it here in a little bit when I explain everything, so just hear me out. But typically, okay, this, this is the part you're not gonna like to hear, okay? Um, typically, the more diverse the formats, the less skillful the format. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna use Monarch format as an example, and that's just because it's one of my favorite formats of all time, okay? But Monarch format was a very diverse format, even though Monarchs were debatably, you know, the best deck because of domain and everything, which I'll get to in a second. Um, even with that, the format format was very, very diverse because you had Monarchs, you had Cosmos, you had Pendulum Magicians, you had PK Fire, and you had, you know, whatever, I don't remember all the other decks, but pretty much everything was viable as long as you made all the right card choices. Monarch format was a very diverse format with uh, Monarchs being the best deck, okay? So I'm going to use that as an example right now, okay? Monarchs were the best deck in that more diverse formats, not because the best players played Monarchs, but because Domain was a card. Pendulums and PK Fire needed their extra deck, guys. Those two decks needed their extra deck, and Domain just says no to that, okay? They, it said no to that. So because of that, you know, those are the two other best decks at the time, really. So because of that, Monarchs kind of shines. You locked your opponent out of the extra deck, so you kind of auto won in a lot of cases. But um, Monarchs not only won hard because of that, um, they won hard also because of Cosmos. Um, in other words, um, Monarchs won so hard at the time, because of all the other decks around them. To put this simply, uh, Monarchs weren't the best deck because the best players piloted that deck. I mean, because I won a lot and I know I'm not the best player, okay? Um, they won because of Domain and because of the other decks available at the time. In other words, you either locked your opponent out of your extra deck completely and won that way, or you were playing against Cosmos and their stuff couldn't be targeted and you didn't care because you had Erebus and Stormforth anyways. In diverse formats, guys, um, you know, one really good anti-meta deck or a couple couple of really good, you know, anti-meta or just, you know, stunny decks in general can really, you know, force decks to be way better than they are, even though, um, not, you know, very good players are playing them. I don't know how else to word that. In other words, um, let's just say you're playing Barrier Statutes or, I don't know, uh, Vanity's Fiend Turbo, okay? In other words, uh, Monarchs now. Um, if you're playing that and you just consistently, you know, make a monster that says, or, you know, or you could, you know, consistently get to a point or a field condition to where your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh, um, it doesn't matter, you know, how bad of a player you are. If you're able to build boards that your opponent can't beat or you're just able to get in matchups, like, you know, um, you know, favorable matchups for yourself all the time, um, you can see how skill really doesn't matter at all. I mean, if I were to take, you know, Vanity's Fiend Turbo or, you know, whatever deck that is, I don't know. Um, if I were to take something like that to a regional right now um, and, you know, consistently get out Vanity's Fiend to where my opponent can't really do anything, you can see how I have a huge chance of winning that tournament. Because, I mean, it, it doesn't take skill. It's just, you know, getting to my win condition faster. It's just a, it's a deck building thing, kind of, I, I guess. But in that instance, since it's also not a deck building thing. It's like an opposite of a deck building thing. Instead of building a more relevant deck to counter, you know, with, with uh, more clever card choices to counter things, I'm building just a pure anti-meta deck. But also, just a second ago, I mentioned favorable matchups, which is another thing that happens a lot in diverse formats. Um, in other words, if you're playing, you know, uh, if you're playing in more of a tier one, you know, a well-defined format, in other words, uh, where there's only like two, you know, three best decks and everyone only plays those three decks, um, you're able to accurately predict what you're going to be going up against and so you're able to make better card choices and it also makes you a better player because you can predict your opponent's moves better and you can kind of play mind games with each other so in that instance it comes down to the better player but in more uh, diverse formats it can kind of come down to just who has the better matchup I mean if you're playing I don't know uh, let's just say uh, paleo right now if you're playing paleo and you're main decking mind drain just random example off the top of my head if you're playing that and I'm also playing rogue and I'm playing you know, side frames, and you go first and you flip that mind drain, you can see how I can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! 
at all. And that's that's what's called a favorable matchup. You have a card or you have, you know, some sort of win condition that completely contradicts mine. Um, another one and a more relevant one right now than I, now that I think about it, let's just say you are playing, you're main decking anti-spell fragrance and you go against Spindulums and you flip that up against them, you can see how they're kind of going to be in a pickle. However, I am a huge believer in the best deck will always win whatever given event. I mean, uh, let's just put a y, let's just say YCS Bochum from this weekend, okay? World Chalice was the best deck of the weekend. It, it was, and, and the reason why is because even though the, the format is super diverse, and, and, you're, and let's just say a, a lot of players did take advantage of favorable matchups or whatever. I don't know what happened over there in Europe. I'm, I'm in Oklahoma, you know what I mean? Let's just say some players were taking advantage of, you know, favorable matchups and winning because of favorable matchups. Even then, that only gets you so far. It really only gets you so far. Um, in other words, the best player playing the best deck that, that they should have been playing will always win that event, guys. And there's there's only so much you can do. I mean, you can, you can uh, you know, buy all the most expensive cards, you know, and target, you know, whatever best deck, you know, whatever, you know, best decks you, you think of or whatever's, you know, meta. You can, you can spend a lot of money and spend, uh, practice, you know, uh, X amount of time and stuff, but... But, okay, the better player will always beat you. If someone is better than you and is playing a better deck and made a better, you know, deck choice than you, you will lose against them. And that is something that I didn't always believe, you know, in my younger days of playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it's something that I strongly believe now. It doesn't, you know, it, not every single event, you know, is a fluke. Like, you know, not everything is a fluke. Um, it really comes down to skill and card choices. To wrap all this up, guys, even though I've been talking about diverse formats versus defined formats, it really really doesn't matter what format you're playing in, okay? Um, your deck build will only get you so far, and then from there, skill will take over. In other words, you might be, you might get to top 32. You might get to top 32 playing, you know, some sort of stunny, you know, true Draco or, or whatever deck you're playing, okay? You might, you might get to top 32 playing some stunny crap, right? But if you are not a better player, then the person sitting across from you, you will not win that event. You have to consistently be better than the player across from you, not only build the best deck, but seriously, be better than the person you're playing against. If you can do both of those things, you will seriously win or top any event that you go to top. I am not even playing, guys. But I will say, though, also in closing, that the ride there is a lot funner and more skillful if you are playing a divine format. That's, if, if that wasn't made apparent in the video, if you guys still don't understand that, I'm really sorry, I tried to explain that the best I could, but you know, we are, we are, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much though, even, even if you don't get it, because we aren't really in a super defined format, we are in a actually pretty hyper diver, diverse format, like especially if you're going to a locals right now, like my locals I know for a fact, just they, they're always, everyone's always playing all kinds of crap. But go ahead, let me know your thoughts on YCS Bochum this weekend, or just, you know, whatever thoughts you have on the format in general, because I would love to hear them down in the comment section. But really quick, I need to give a huge, huge shout out to all my patrons. Their names are gonna be flying behind me. They are just fantastic. Thank you all so, so, so much, seriously. Thank you all so, so much for supporting me. You guys don't know how amazing it is, how, how grateful I am, you know, to have you guys. Uh, it's just, it, it's just amazing. You guys, I seriously have the best fans on the planet. I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna see you and ramble on about that, but yeah, I seriously do have the best fans on the planet guys i really hope that everyone enjoyed this video shout out again to the commentators at ycs bochum um i hope to see those guys you know still commentating and stuff because i really like those commentators i don't know if you guys do but I, I always like them when i watch you know european streams i wish we had something similar here in the united states i really do that'd be that'd be really really great but until we do get something like that here in the u.s guys i'm going to go try to get rid of my beans infestation because i might need to make the ultimate deck Subscribe!